Welcome to this week's episode of State of Real Estate. My name is John Carissimo, and this show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate. We're here every single Friday, live at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. The best thing to do is go to tampaschoolofrealestate.com and drop in your email, and we'll send you emails whenever it is that we go live. But if you're watching on Facebook, you can hit that bell icon. YouTube, you hit the bell icon. You'll get notifications whenever it is that we have new content to help you better understand how to grow your real estate business because that's what state of real estate is. It's our weekly mastermind to grow your real estate business because at the Tampa School of Real Estate, we're on a mission to be more than a required class, to help set our students up for success in any way it is that we can, which is why we're here every single Friday. Make sure you're tuned in, locked in. But let's get into today's topic, today's subject about a farm area. So what we're gonna be breaking down today, number one is what is a farm area and why is it important? And then number two, how do you market to your farm area effectively? So I'm really excited to bring today's episode to you. My name is John Crismo. You're watching State of Real Estate. You are watching State of Real Estate. Every Friday at 12 noon Eastern Time, <laughs> grow your real estate business. <laughs> Are you watching State of Real Estate? <laughs> Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of State of Real Estate. Happy Friday, everyone. We are live. Uh, welcome to everyone tuning in for this week's episode. Again, we're here every single Friday. And the reason why we started this, or this is going to get to the point of today's topic, is that when you get your real estate license, you're required to take a pre-licensing course to get the license. You have to pass an exam based on the information. Two exams, actually. You're in a course and your state exam. Why am I talking about this when we're talking about farming? Well, because so many people that are in a position to farm and to market with a real estate license have no idea how. And that might be why you're tuning into this today. You're, you might be honest with yourself saying, hey, yeah, I've got no idea how to farm. Let me tune into this. Or even more rare, well, I kind of know a little bit, but I want to learn more. Because most people think that, okay, I've got the license, I should be able to figure the rest out. What else do I need? Now, I know a lot of people aren't approaching this in that manner, but that, if that is the way you're approaching this, you're probably not tuning into today's show. Because we created this, this show to go above and beyond with topics like farming. Things like that that are essential to growing your real estate business that you want to know about to start a successful real estate career. So definitely make sure you're tuned in. And if you need any of your Florida Real Estate Commission required courses, whether that be post licensing, maybe you still need to get your license or you need exam prep or you want to get your broker license or you need to do continued education, give us a call. Check out our website. The phone number is 813-333-2676. You can also find out more info online at tampaschoolofrealestate.com. But let's get into today's episode. So what is a farm area? First and foremost, what is a real estate farm area? When we mention this term farm, you might be thinking, oh, well, is this only important if I'm doing agricultural property? No. Matter of fact, the term in its usage with most real estate professionals who use this term is not at all related to agricultural property unless that is their business. This is universally applicable to any type of real estate where you have customers that you want to attract. So if we, if we talk about Tampa, for instance, I forget exactly what the exact statistic for Tampa itself, but the Tampa Bay area, I think has like 3 million plus people. It's probably a lot more since that statistic was last updated. But over 3 million people in the Tampa Bay area. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of business to be had with a real estate license, but who will be your business? Because if you think it's going to be all 3 million of them, wow, what kind of marketing plan do you have to get all 3 million of those people? to successfully convert 
those three million people. Because a lot of people make the mistake when it comes to marketing of doing something one time. You know, maybe, you know, we got Gasparilla coming up next weekend. Maybe you get a float in the Gasparilla parade. And that gives you the opportunity to get a lot of exposure. But will you ever see these people again who are seeing you? And you might say, well, no, I'm just going to make a good impact. I'm going to make a good first impression on them, and they'll come back to me if I make a strong enough first impression. And that is flawed thinking. How do I know it's flawed thinking? Well, because multi-billion dollar companies. Think of major brands that you know. Coca-Cola, Apple, Windows, Microsoft, uh, well, what else are the, uh, you know, you could probably say things like Pfizer or whatever medical companies advertise. And despite their market share, despite how many people know the name, they continue to advertise. Coca-Cola is a great example of this. Coca-Cola doesn't need to advertise. If you're to ask Coca-Cola if they need to advertise, they say, yes, we need to advertise. But they really don't because everybody already knows what Coca-Cola is. People ask for it by name when they go to a restaurant. So why do they keep advertising? To stay top of mind. And so marketing is very ineffective if you do something one time. It's not about just reaching people one time. It's about a plan of action. And that's really more so what we're talking about today when it comes to the marketing. So we're going to get to what the farm area is. But for your farm area, it's part of your plan of marketing action of how you will market to people that you want to turn from potential clients who maybe don't have any idea who you even are into actual clients and repeat clients and, and clients who get you referrals. If you don't have a plan of action to transition someone from that phase of not knowing you exist to being a president of your fan club that might happen every now and then you might be able to you know make that work you talk to enough people eventually some of them will probably want to do business with you but if you have an intentional plan where you're not waiting for things to happen to you but you're making things happen because of you that's where the farm area is so important so let me do this let me let me go to the computer over here you should be able to see my screen. Yep, looks like you should see my screen right now. Let me know if you can see my screen in the comments here. And what I got pulled up is just a map of Tampa. And so, yeah, that, that 3 million people, I think it's something like all of this here. You can go probably pull up those statistics, but I don't want to be wandering all over the internet right now. What I want to do is illustrate to you certain points. So if there's 3 million people here, how are you going to have a consistent plan of action to reach all 3 million of these people? And look, I know a lot of you are tuning in from down in South Florida, say down in Miami. Uh, let's see. I wonder what, uh, we could probably get a Florida population map. Maybe a population, here we go, this is kind of, so this shows population density which shows where the populated areas are. And I know we got a lot of people that tune in down from South Florida, a lot of people down there with their real estate licenses, a lot of people that have used Tampa School of Real Estate from all parts of Florida and really all over the world. We're not just in Tampa. Uh, our online courses can be taken anywhere on this planet or wherever you have an internet connection. Uh, Orlando, there's definitely a lot of population density there. Uh, I know we've got a bunch of students out that way. Jacksonville, same thing. Tallahassee, uh, out here in Pensacola. I mean, you look at these populated areas, we've got all Southwest Florida down here, Sarasota, the Fort Myers, uh, uh, all of that. There's a lot of people that live in these areas. And so when these areas are so densely populated, another little map there. Yeah, so you can see where these hot spots are, where, where things are very densely populated. And so what that means is a very small area. And, you know, I mean, we look at a picture of this down here, like Miami. You look at all these high-rise buildings. The, these, are, these are all condos here. There's a lot of people living in a small area with this. Uh, let's see. Let's go in here back up to New Tampa. Let's go uh, right where uh, Tampa School of Real Estate headquarters is out here in New Tampa. Let's flip on the satellite view. 
And you can kind of see the population density right off the, the satellite view here. You can kind of see how close the homes are together. And if you were to sit here and like count out the individual houses in say one of these neighborhoods, I mean, you realize, I mean, we could just sit here and count out, let's see, let's see, we got 5, 10, 15, there's probably like 25 homes here, maybe another 30 there, maybe another like 50 there, maybe another like 25 there. I mean, you add this all up, this one single little neighborhood, which is just this one little neighborhood that's behind uh, our, our main office location, uh, and there's a ton of apartments right around here as well. I mean, just this one neighborhood, you've got hundreds of homes. And if you think of developing a plan of repeat follow-up Let, let's talk about like say uh say a postcard so say you wanted to send a postcard out to th this neighborhood right here let's say there's a uh, hundred homes just to make the math easy maybe there's more maybe there's less but let's just say you only wanted to target 100 homes how much is that going to cost you to send a postcard to them and yes, you might be able to get bulk rates the more you send, and there's all kinds of ways to get discounts, and there's other ways to advertise other than postcards. Let's just keep it simple. Let's say it's like 50 cents to send out this one postcard to this neighborhood. Well, for 100 homes, that's $50. Is that one postcard going to guarantee you get a deal? Probably not, because what are most of those people going to do when they get your postcard? Number one, are they even going to get it? Is it just like wedged in with some other junk mail that gets tossed with all the other junk mail? Or maybe your piece of junk mail, and don't get offended when I say your, your material, marketing material is junk mail because that's the way people are interpreting. I'm just using the language that, that people will be using when they get this. It's like, oh, junk, 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 junk. I do it all the time. A lot of times uh, the junk mail doesn't even make it inside from the mailbox. It gets disposed of before it even makes it in my front door. So is that going to happen to your postcard? Most likely. By a large percentage. Let's say there's 100 homes in here. I don't want to throw just random statistics at you, but let's say 10% of them look at it. That's 10 people that are going to look at it. Are those 10 people going to need a realtor right now, right that moment? Maybe. But odds are probably not. And so it's not just about sending out one marketing mailer. And I want to use the example of, say, 100 homes, because let's say you want to do this twice a month for a year. If you want to send a postcard twice a month for a year, and we're assuming 50 cents it would cost, it might be more than that, might be slightly less than that, depending on uh, how much you're paying and the discounts you're able to get and things like that. But keep it easy, 50 cents, twice a month for 100 homes. Uh, let's go to the board here, because I know throwing out a bunch of random numbers. So let's say we've identified 100 homes that we want to target. And let's say these 100 homes, you want to get them, let's say, twice a month. And let's say you want to do this for 12 months. And let's say this cost fifty not fifty dollars, fifty cents per postcard. And will you have business after one year of doing this, of reaching out to 100 homes, doing it two times a month, 12 times uh, a year? And if it costs you 50 cents per postcard, you can see where this starts to add up here. You know, so we, we do some quick math. Let me go ahead and get the, uh, the whiteboard up here so you guys can see that. There we go.
So let's pull out our handy dandy calculator here. Calculate this up. The math is pretty easy, but the numbers, the real numbers you're using probably won't be this easy. So just walking through exactly the calculations here. We've got 100 homes we're targeting. This is the 100 homes in our farm area that we're looking to go after. And let's say we want to reach them. So that's 100 postcards. They go to each of those homes two times a month for 12 months at 50 cents per postcard. So that ends up being $1,200 a year for having a, you know, just regular. You're just trying to show up. You know, every other week it sounds like a lot, but how often are they not even going to see your postcard because it just goes in the junk mail? So you have to plan accordingly. And the biggest mistake I see agents make when they try to market to a farm area, number one, is they give up way too early. But the mistake that usually causes them to give up, so maybe this should be the number one here. Rule number one, this is the rule of farming. You don't break this rule, you'll come out ahead with real estate, you know, it, for how much it is that we get paid here. Unless you're doing like something extraordinary to send out on a regular basis here, you should pretty much always come out ahead when you're able to start harvesting from your farm area, from when you've been marketing to it enough that you're getting leads regularly, that you can just go pick a lead from your farm area when you need board more business. You've already got it queued up and lined up. But you know, just by this estimate right here, we're talking $1,200 a year just for 100 homes. Let's say you 10x this. Let's say that you wanted to reach 1,000 homes. How much is that costing you? Well, that's costing you $12,000 a year. You know, sending out this one postcard, uh, you know, let's say we did a 1,000 a, a homes times 50 cents for postcard because we just want to do it one time to see if we get anything. Again, this is the wrong way. This is not farming. This is basically the equivalent of a farmer going out there and throwing a bunch of seeds in the field one time, not watering them, not doing anything to care for them or nurture them or anything like that, and just hoping one of them immediately sprouts into a plant. It sounds ridiculous when you compare the two, but that's really what you're doing if you just throw out a bunch of postcards one time and don't have any follow-up. But you can see here where this only costs $500. So you might say, oh yeah, cool, I got $500. Let me go ahead and spend that $500. I could reach 1,000 homes because I got to get it. It's a numbers game. I got to reach more people. And you're right, it is a numbers game. You got to reach more people. But the number you're forgetting is the follow-up numbers. And that's where this really gets expensive, doing this two times a month for 12 uh, months in the year. That now turns your one postcard into 24, and that's why that would end up costing $12,000 for us to do this 24 times. Because if we're doing this twice a month for 12 months, that's 24 times, so that's $12,000. You can see how that's different than what we had over here with the $1,200 because we're only trying to reach 1,000 homes. So it's not necessarily about specifically how many people you could reach, it's how many times you could reach them consistently and following up with them. Think of yourself as a farmer and not you're just not going out there to just plant the seeds one time. You're going back to, to, to nurture to, to create a bountiful harvest because it's not going to happen on its own. You've got to continue to market and you could do a lot more than say a postcard. There's all kinds of creative ways it is you could market and really the idea is doing as much as you can but to a particular targeted area. And look, farming is one of the topics that's covered in our post-licensing course. So if you have not already taken your post-licensing, not only is it required for your first renewal, it's going to help you better understand your real estate business and learn real world topics to help you grow your real estate business. So that's absolutely something you need to get enrolled in as soon as you have a real estate license. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into marketing near farm area, some of the other things it is you could do, but one of the most important things, how do you select an effective farm area? So stick with us. My name is John Carismo. You're watching State of Real Estate. So you just got your real estate license. How can you jumpstart your real estate business? 
the number one thing you should do before you do anything else is post licensing. Now look, this is already a requirement, so you're gonna have to do it anyways, but here's why you wanna do it early. The sooner you do post licensing, the sooner you're gonna learn the real world concepts in post licensing that will help you create a business plan, that'll help you plan for your success in real estate. Post licensing is all about real world topics that are usable that'll help you grow your real estate business. And at Tampa School of Real Estate, we have the best post licensing courses around. Find out more about how post licensing can help you jumpstart your real estate career. Go to postflorida.com. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of State of Real Estate. My name is John Crismo. This show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate. We're here every single Friday. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Go to the tampaschoolrealestate.com website and drop your email in there so you get updates whenever it is that we go live. And if you need any of your FREC requirements or any way it is we can help you with your real estate career, whether it's getting it started, getting the exam passed, getting your business going, or opening your own brokerage, call us 813-333-2676. But what we're talking about today more specifically, an essential topic for really creating a, a business out of your real estate license. It's easy to make a job out of your real estate license, but a lot of people aren't getting a real estate license to have a job. They wanna have a business, something where they could be the boss, where they could have something bigger than themselves, where they could be in control. And some people are happy with that just being a one person organization, but you could build a real estate team. You could open your own real estate brokerage. A lot of opportunities that exist with a real estate license, but one of the things that's essential if you wanna build a business is having a sustainable flow of new clients. Now, you might be able to get to some level where, you know, you got enough business, you got enough referral clients, so you don't need to advertise and market to get any new business. And you might be happy with the level of business it is that you have. But if you'd like to grow your business more, it's absolutely possible. And that's where you can begin to grow the business bigger than yourself. And so look, you could provide a great experience and you know earn all kinds of referrals, but especially when you're first starting out, that, that could be really slow coming. And, and you know, if you don't have any past customers, how are you gonna get those past customers to give you referrals until you get past customers? So, you know, sometimes you've got to get out of your comfort zone. Maybe you don't have a friend or family member who has an immediate need to purchase or do real estate right now. They they probably know somebody who does, who they could get in contact with you, and that's why you still want to lean into your sphere of influence. But at the same time, you got to balance out how you're attracting business in. You can't just rely on your friends and family alone. Maybe your broker is providing you some leads. You can't rely on just those leads alone. Not if you wanna make a business out of this. If you just want this to be a job, you could rely on all these things that require your effort and work. But that's where farming and marketing comes in because farming and marketing, you could really streamline and automate a lot of the contact points and touch points Think of like, again, sending a postcard, but it doesn't just have to be a postcard. It could be an email. It could be some sort of, of ad on social media or, or Facebook or TikTok or YouTube or anything like that. It could be an actual Google search ad that you're targeting to a particular area. Again, one of the most important things when it comes to having an effective farming strategy is having a very specific target audience and you know just to go to my laptop one more time here and you know looking at this map here so i just went and pulled up right by our, our uh, main office up here in new tampa but i mean you zoom out i mean we're talking there's like a hundred homes there and that's not even all these neighborhoods and actually yeah th this is a whole this is a larger neighborhood over here i believe this one's called west meadows uh, there's Richmond Place right there. This is Hunter's Green. Uh, there's Cory Lake Isles right over in this area. A lot of very expensive homes in there. There's Cory Lake Isles right there. So you can see some of the, these neighborhoods as they're laid out. I mean, and this this probably has, I don't know, ballpark maybe 200 homes in that neighborhood. So going by that math there, if it's $1,200 to for 50 cents per contact, whether that's a postcard or some sort of ad or anything like that it is you're doing, 
uh, we get really complicated with this and really complex. But I like to think of the postcard example because it really helps you understand something very simple to help you budget accordingly for this neighborhood. Because if this has 200 homes in it instead of just 100, that's going to be double the cost. That's now not $100 a month, that's $200 a month, which might be something you're in the position to do. But can you commit to doing that for 12 plus months? Can you commit to never giving up on your farm area? Because the moment you stop farming your farm area, you're allowing your crop to die because they're going to forget about you. No matter how much marketing has been done on the pa in the past, if you don't continue to market, this is why Coca-Cola and Apple and all these other companies continue to market. Because if you don't continue to market, you'll be forgotten. And if you're forgotten, if they don't know you, they can't flow you. Drop a comment in there if you know who, uh, who is the, the guy that likes to say that. If they don't know you, they can't flow you. Because if they don't know who you are, how are they going to do business with you? Your marketing is how you get people to know you. But if you're just marketing all over the place, if you send a postcard here to Corey Lake Isles, then you're like, oh, let me, let me go send something up here to, to, what are we, we've got, I think, Seven Oaks is up here. Let me go send some to Seven Oaks. And you know what? Nah, forget New Tampa. I want to go do something in South Tampa. So let me send something down to Palmasia here because it's a really expensive area. No, actually, you know what? I just read about Derek Jeter. Let me go and send something to Davis Island. I mean, yeah, you're, you're getting your name out there, but it's all over the place. I mean, look how big, how massive. I mean, we go look at Lakeland even. Lakeland, I mean, used to be nothing compared to what exists in Lakeland today. I mean, we could look at Orlando and all of, I mean, look at how many people. Look at all the people that need real estate. And yeah, out here, not a whole lot. Looks like a bunch of swampland and farmland. But look at all the people out here. What do we got? Like Melbourne and we're getting down to South Florida. Uh, we've got Fort Lauderdale coming up. There's uh, what is the Vera Beach. So, I mean, you could just see that there's, uh, the last time they, they counted this, it was like 22 million people in Florida. 22 million people. And this is why, despite all of the business, despite all of the competition you might think there is in real estate, there, there's like a, over 100,000 people with a real estate license. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but there's a lot of people with a real estate license in Florida. But at the same time, there's a lot of people that need your services. You know, if we've got 22 million people, and we're assuming, you know, for every hundred, let's figure out how many hundreds there are, there would be 220,000 hundreds. And if it cost us $1,200 per hundred, you know, that marketing strategy we talked about there is going to cost $264 million a year. If you want to have two postcards a month, go to every person in Florida. Now, actually, you're probably going to be coming a lot less than that because you give that much business to the U.S. Postal Service. They're going to give you a very sweet deal on that postage because you start sending enough of this stuff, especially on a regular basis, you get some really great pricing incentives. And that's why there is so much junk mail out there is because the Postal Service will give you a really deep discount if you send enough of it. But it's unrealistic to think you could spend $264 million. Why are you trying to market to all of Florida when to do it effectively it's going to cost you $264 million at least? That's just sending postcards. We're not even talking about running social ads, YouTube, Facebook. Or we're not talking about search ads. It's probably a billion dollar industry for advertising real estate in Florida. For anyone out there that's in, look, you got a ton of competition. You know, there's there, for marketing and advertising companies. If you're like, wow, a billion dollar industry, if that's news to you and you're into to marketing and things like that, yeah, there, there's so much marketing dollars that get spent in Florida. I would estimate it at, at least a billion dollars, if not more, because there's so much real estate activity. You know, if we, if we sat here and calculated the commission, just how much money got exchanged for all of the transactions that occurred. We might have to do that on a future episode. Let me know in the comments if that is something that you'd be interested in seeing. We might put something like that together and throw that into a future State of Real Estate episode of just how much business is really out there. Because it's mind-boggling how much money gets transacted. The reason why advertising in real estate in Florida is a billion-dollar industry is because it's a multi-billion-dollar industry of sales.
that money being spent in advertising is being returned in such a high level. That's why it's being spent in advertising, because it works, especially the bigger players, especially these people you see on TV, the big real estate teams that spend big marketing dollars. And, you know, those, those brokerage firms are typically not a good place for new agents to start out in because it's very much like a job. And, and you might be looking for that type of job, career, structured, where there's not as much room for, you know, unlimited potential. You might like a, those team type of environments, but if you want the truly unlimited the true flexibility of you being the boss, you being in control, that's where doing your own thing and building your own thing is really gonna be to your biggest advantage. But you gotta be a smart business person. If you're gonna be the boss, if you're gonna be the business person, you need to be the smart business person. And then, like we mentioned earlier, the post-licensing course is so essential when it comes to understanding real estate, your real estate license from a business perspective. So I highly encourage you to get enrolled in that post-licensing course if you are not already. Look, this is about all the time we've got for today's episode, so I do want to thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of State of Real Estate. If you want to find out more information about starting your real estate career, make sure you check out tampaschoolofrealestate.com. You can give us a call at 813-333-2676. You can also text us at that number as well. We've got a chat on our website. Any way you want to get in communication with us, emails, Get in communication with us. We're here to help people build successful real estate careers. That's how we succeed at the Tampa School of Real Estate is by helping others succeed. That's really truly our mark of success is, is you becoming successful with your real estate license. Because we want you to refer business to us. Just like when you provide a great experience to your clients, you'll want them to refer business to you. If you've got a friend or family member that's considering a career in real estate, we want to be, you know, at any part of the process we can be to help you. So that way you can point people back in our direction. Hey, look, if you're looking to get started, Tampa School of Real Estate is the place to go. And we actually have a referral affiliate program now available. You can find out more information about that at tsre.us forward slash refer, tsre like Tampa School Real Estate, tsre.us, forward slash refer, will actually reward you for sharing your link for anybody that purchases or signs up for any courses or exam prep tools, books, anything like that. Uh, you can actually get PayPal payouts right to you, or we'll actually double the value for a store credit. So sign up for that again at tsre.us forward slash refer, R-E-F-E-R. -E That's about all the time we have for today. I want to thank you for tuning into this week's episode. We'll be back next week on Wednesday. Wednesday for Ask the Instructor. Until then, you have a great weekend, and I'll see you then. If you're looking to get in on the real estate action that's going on in Tampa right now, we're who you need to talk to. We can help you get your real estate license, start your real estate career. We're here to assist you for the life of your real estate career. Give us a call. Phone number is 813-928-0106 or check us out online at tampaschool.com. Do you want to incorporate studying for your real estate exams into your busy schedule? Now you can review the key topics you need to know to pass your class and state exams with our MP3 audio review. Simply pop in your headphones or connect to your car to reinforce crucial information while you exercise or drive. Listen to the first unit for free at mp3audioreview.com. That's mp3audioreview.com. Hey, if you're enjoying the show today, which I'm sure you are, be sure to hit like, subscribe, post your comments, share with your friends and family. Thank you guys so much for watching. You are watching State of Real Estate. Every Friday at 12 noon Eastern Time. Grow your real estate business. You're watching State of Real Estate. Have you
you've been thinking about getting your Florida real estate license, look, the process is probably easier than you think. We break it down step by step, how much it's going to cost, what it is that you need to do to get your Florida real estate license. Find out all of that and more at LicenseFL.com. Again, that's LicenseFL.com.